Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about sync and uh, window sync in particular. Uh, in a video I made about all these different warp modes and how to reproduce them in Bitwig, I claimed that window sync would be very difficult to achieve. However, that was wrong and someone in the comments actually hinted at the solution. So that's what we are going to talk about today. Now let's look at the normal sync to get an idea of what's going on. So when I start turning up this knob, we can see that more of the waveform gets shoved in from the left side. And we can also see that here at the end of the window, uh, we jump back to zero actually instantly. And this can create very sharp um, noises or frequency, especially when you modulate that uh, sync intensity. Uh, let me do that real quick. Yeah, you can hear this crackling or this, this clicking. Sometimes it might be desired or I leave the sync as is if I have a fixed setting, but usually when I want to modulate this parameter, I prefer those clicks for not to be there. So that's what windowed sync is for. And what it does, let me turn it up all the way. What it does, it forces the amplitude at the beginning and at the end of the waveform to zero so that we have a, yeah, a zero crossing and um, a soft transition. And this already indicates what we need to do. We need to control the amplitude of the oscillator and not the phase as I initially thought. And then we have also the half sync window, which is the same thing. It just has a steeper uh, decline at the beginning and the end. And just to prove it, now we can hear that these clicks are gone. Sounds a lot smoother. So uh, as you can see, I have a little setup here with a wavetable oscillator. The internal phase is turned off and we use an external phaser with a sync um, to get a sync sound. Now let's do the audio check real quick. Yeah, we can see and hear the same kind of issues. Uh, this crackling, which we are now going to get rid of. Uh, first, duplicate this oscillator and switch it to a sine wave. And then make sure to disconnect this cord and actually hook it up to the phaser itself and not the sync output. Or it won't work. Now go to level and grab an amplitude modulator. And the sine wave will be our modulator. Now, that should already work. Yeah, it looks pretty identical, except for the start point, where we now get this kind of flattened sine wave. The reason why this is happening is because of the phase relationship between those two oscillators. This one changes its phase, uh, or rotates its phase right here which is identical to the uh, zero level here. So in order to get the same behavior as in Serum, we need to shift the phase of this oscillator around 50%. But now we're in Bitwig, so we can make use of all of its uh, fantastic tools, including including the scroll oscillator, which lets us draw in any kind of shape we like for our window. This is more like the, the half window that we have seen. Um, we can make that even smaller. Maybe add a little curve. Yeah, um, 
Of course, we can also create some very unorthodox, unorthodox amplitude curves as we see fit. Yeah, just as a side note, we're in Bitwig, we have complete uh, freedom of what we are doing. Now let's get some sound examples playing. So grab an LFO, turn it to a sawtooth and modulate the sync. Um, and I really like using Let's make this a bit more, something like this. Really like using square waves. Oh, don't want to modulate that. Like to use square waves for uh, sync sound because it looks cool and it sounds cool. So, and as always in Bitwig, this is only the beginning. We can now do some more interesting stuff like bendings. And maybe a sign mod to go crazy. Ooh. Maybe with a sine mode, we need a little less aggressive waveform, like a sine wave. Make this one stereo. Yeah, okay, now we're in the playground of Bitwig, and again, the, the sky is the limit. That sums it up already also for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, you learned something. Please uh, like, subscribe, and uh, see you next time.